So he's in his third season as the head coach at South Dakota State. He's won three consecutive regular season Summit League titles. He was the conference coach of the year in 2020. He played his college ball at Wayne State and is in the school's Hall of Fame. I'm joined by Eric Henderson. Eric, thanks for joining me. Chris, thanks for having me, my man. Awesome. So 27-4 and four on the season, including 18-0 and 0 in conference play. First team ever to do that in Summit League history. I mean, what's been working well for you guys? Well, first and foremost, it, it starts with recruiting because you have to have the players. <laughs> and um, we, we have a tremendous group of kids that are just really, really connected. They're very, very selfless. Um, they, they, uh, they celebrate each other's success more than their own. Um, we have a, a group that is very, very balanced and deep. You know, we have two guys that, you know, probably get more the tension than most, but um, I'll be honest with you, we have guys that have, have really, really produced um, and multiple guys that have done it. So our balance, our versatility, we can play multiple ways. Um, and that, that all starts with the players and their ability to buy into their roles and be as connected as they are. And so they, they deserve a ton of credit. Um, and then the staff that, you know, I get to work with every day is tremendous. You know, they work their tails off. They're very, very much of servant leadership style and I'm just really, really proud of all of them. So I've watched you guys a bunch this year and it is, it's a fun team to watch. That's why I wanted to reach out and chat. I mean, what's the philosophy and culture behind, I mean, you mentioned some of the recruiting, but just being a South Dakota State Jackrabbit, what's some of the guy, the kind of guys you're looking for, not necessarily, you know, skills as a player, but as a person? Well, we, we talk a lot about character and um, like, you're, like you're saying, what, what are the values and, and character traits that we value? And, um, you know, we talk about five character traits all the time. Their honesty, respect, selflessness, communication, and compete. And obviously those, you know, five character traits probably speak for themselves on the court. Um, the one that I'm probably most proud of, especially this year, is our selflessness. We really have a great ability to um, share the basketball at a high level. Um, we, we don't care who gets the credit. Um, teams have some difficult choices in how they want to guard us. Do they want to take away the three, we lead the country in three point field goal percentage, or do they want to double the post? And because we got guys that can really, really score with their back to the basket and around the rim too. So we understand teams have difficult choices, but it all starts with those character traits and especially that selflessness, because you can be good passers, but maybe more importantly, you need to be willing passers. Um, and we have a bunch of guys like that. Now, you know, our offensive philosophy is we, we believe in skill development and, um, letting our guys play with a great amount of freedom. Um, but you have to work at it. Then you earn confidence and you earn freedom by putting time in um, on your own with the coaches in the gym, um, working on how to read ball screens, whether that's watching film, whether that's doing drills, whatever. Our guys spend a ton of time in there. So um, that, that's kind of how we go about things. We, we try to have our guys confident um, and believing in each other. So much, you know, it's a fun team to watch. Um... So there's a kid that I, I know coming from, you know, from the Toronto area that's playing at a major conference school. I won't name him, but I watch him quite a bit and he looks miserable. I can just see the coach is just suffocating the life out of him and his, and his players and stuff like that. He just looks like he's not even having fun. Do you even talk to your players about having fun? I mean, I know it's a little easier when you're 27 and four, but do you, do you let them enjoy it? And, and hey, make sure you enjoy this. We talk about it all the time. Uh, it's the last thing I write up on the board before every single game. I'm not a rah-rah guy. I'm uh, kind of more, let's create some habits and, and uh, let, let's rely on those habits that we've created and worked on for a long time. And the last thing I write on the board is play your tail off and have fun. And uh, it's the last thing I say before we go out every time. And, and uh, I think that's really, really important. Um, and, you know, I think, by putting in the time, by, by um, spending time with each person individually, building their confidence um, and, and letting them know that I believe in them, our staff believes in them, is, is really, really important. And um, to be able to allow to, them to have that freedom, to have that confidence, they have to put in the work. And, um, and, and when they do, uh, it, you know, you see great success. And, and that's, our guys have worked their tails off They've um, earned that the, the ability to play with the amount of freedom that we allow them to. 
And, um, and, and when you do that, I think it makes this game a lot more enjoyable. I think it comes across, you know, even me sitting in Canada watching, I'm like, these guys are having fun out there, man. It's, it's great to see. So three guys on your team averaging between 15 and 16 points a game, Douglas Wilson, Noah Friedel and Bailey, uh, Baylor Shireman, excuse me. Um, just talk to me about what kind of guys these guys are off the court. I know they're all conference players and players of the year and that they've got all the accolades, but who are these guys off the court? Those your big three. Well, they're just great individuals, you know, they're selfless leaders and, and when I talk about those guys, it's it's even being being maybe our leading scorers per se. They're they're very very selfless, and um, they all make sacrifices, including those guys, for what's better for the team. And they're more than willing to do that. They're selfless people, and they really really care about one statistic, and that's the W. And uh, we embrace and they embrace every moment that we get a chance to step on the floor with each other. And that's what makes, that's what makes this group special. We've played with a target on our back for a long time, you know, and uh, this program was successful before I got here. And uh, fortunately it, it, we've, we've been able to continue that. And, and so when you are, that's, you know, you're going to get, a, you know, for the most part, everybody's best shot and to be able to have leadership, um, especially from the players, um, and, and it's, it's, it's invaluable. And uh, that group does a tremendous job with that. So aside from those three, I mean, Luke Apple, this is a guy averaging about nine points a game, but goes off for 41 <laughs> against Oral Roberts the other day. One, where the hell did that come from? And two, how comforting is that to know, like, hey, you want to shut down our guards? Cool. I'll, you know, Luke will drop 40 on you. You know what's really, really interesting, Chris? Um, three of the four games before that, three guys that we haven't even mentioned had five threes in a game, three different guys. And then Luke goes and scores 41 against Oral Roberts. And, and that's just uh, talks about the buy-in from everybody on our team to, to embrace their role. And when, you're num when, when you have the opportunity, take advantage of it. And um, like I said, you know, teams have some difficult choices, how they want to guard us. And um, when we were playing up at Oral Roberts to get back to Luke's situation where he dropped 41, you know, they decided that they wanted to take away the three-point shot and we're going to let our post players play one-on-one. -on -one. And, and um, Luke did a tremendous job of eating up space and, and uh, playing with a pace that was, was very, very electric. And he finished around the basket, you know, terrifically. Um, so it was it was just a special night. There's not many times I've, I've seen players in whatever the zone is. I certainly have never experienced it. But uh, but, you know, to see Luke, you, you know, in that zone was pretty special. You know, I was fortunate enough to coach Mike Dom here. You know, that was probably three years ago as an assistant coach. And um, I saw him hit 10 threes and score, 50, you know, over 50 at Fort Wayne. Those are the only two times I've really seen a player in the zone. And uh, it, it was pretty special. It's funny, I used to write for Mid-Major Madness and Mike Dom is like a Mid-Major Madness legend. They're always yeah. writing about him there. But, um, you know, one of the things in just going back and watching the highlights of that game with Luke going for 41, it reminded me a lot of what we've seen from Loyola Chicago over the past couple of years, where if, you know, Lucas Williamson, the guards aren't hitting. Well, we got Krutwig down under and, you know, good luck trying to stop. You want to take away the three? Cool. Well, we've got Krutwig. Any similarities you see with that? I see there. I see a lot of similarities, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, I don't know how much you've watched Wyoming this year. A lot, their, yes. Yeah, yeah, they play through their post guys a lot as well. And if they get doubled, they're willing passers and they got guys that can knock down shots on the perimeter. So it, it, much like Loyola Chicago, like you mentioned, much like Wyoming this year, we played very, very similarly. You know, I, I think two years ago, we probably led the country in post feeds, just simple post feeds, just walking it down and throwing it in. We're ball screening a little bit more this year, but we still play through our post the majority of the time. And and um, we're just, you know, fortunate that we got great players down there. Douglas Wilson, who was the MVP of our league two years ago, and um, and then Luke and then Matt Dentlinger and even Baylor Shireman. You know, we get him some touches down there. They're such, they're such good passers and they're such willing passers if if people are digging on them, if people are dub doubling, th that they're going to spray it. And um, we got multiple guys on the perimeter to make shots. So like you said, it, it, there is a lot of similarities to, you know, Loyola Chicago's group a couple last year and then obviously Wyoming's group this year. 
Yeah, I got on the Wyoming bandwagon pretty early this year <laughs> watching them. I'm like, well, these guys are good. You know, it's funny. Uh, so I do play-by-play for Orangeville Prep, which is the number one high school team up in Canada. Yeah. And their guard this year got an offer from Wyoming. And I know this kid, like he's from Montreal. He doesn't even know where Wyoming is. <laughs> and I never get involved with the kids' offers or anything like that. But I kind of pulled him aside and went, hey, look, I don't even tell you what to do, but – you should really think about that Wyoming team because they are damn good. You know what I mean? That's that's something. Yeah, good. that's a fun group. I mean, Coach yeah. Linder does a hell of a job, and and uh, I just love the way they play. You know, I, I watch you know their films just to because we are very very similar in our in our thought process and what we're trying to get accomplished. So try to learn every day. So how are you guys health wise heading into the conference tournament right now? We're, we're in good shape. You know, two years ago, we lost Doug right before the conference tournament, which really, really hurt. And and then, you know, but health wise, we're, we're in really, really good shape. Our guys are healthy and, and um, you know, very, very connected. So we're excited. So 18 wins in a row. I mean, any um, frustration at maybe the lack of attention from the AP top 25? I know you got some votes the past week, but um, it's got to be a little bit fr- like, what do we got to do here? <laughs> Well, we're, we're a program that, you know, talks about and thinks about like it, about it like this. You can only control what you can control, you know, and, and um, we, we're a very confident group. We believe in ourselves, um, but uh, we don't let that outside noise influence very, us very much. And, and um, I do. It, it is nice that people are starting to recognize what we're doing and the accomplishments that we're achieving. But at the end of the day, um, we, we still just approach it of, you know, let's, let's go take advantage of the next opportunity that we have. And uh, let's try to get a little bit better today. And uh, we just enjoy being around each other. So you mentioned target on your back. I mean, obviously you guys right now, I mean, it's a giant bullseye. <laughs> What's the conversation like with your guys heading into the conference tournament? No, Hey, you're going to get everybody's best shot. Well, it's, it's something that we're used to, to be honest with you. It's not, a, it's not something that we're not comfortable with. And um, we talk about you're going to have expect, expectations regardless, whether they're good or bad, and I'd prefer them to be good. <laughs> and, uh, and so um, to, to, go with, to, to go about it like that and, and understanding that we have to be at the top of our game, we're, we're, we're comfortable with that. We understand that, and, and um, we, we want to just go out there and, you know, take one game at a time and, and uh, embrace the next opportunity. And that's Omaha on Saturday night and, um, you know, and, and, and play our best. And if we're fortunate enough to, uh, you know, end up on the right side of the scoreboard, let's get ready for the next one after that. So for those unfamiliar, the number four seed has won three of the last five Summit League tournaments. Are your guys familiar with that? Yeah, we're one of them. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> So speaking of that, you know, obviously last year, Oral Roberts making the run. I mean, just um, how challenging was that sitting on your couch watching them have that kind of success? You know, it was a devil headed sword. You know, I mean, in one in one breath, you're you know, you're like, man, that could be us, you know. And, you know, they they we we played them in the semifinals and got beat at the buzzer on a tip in and they, we played good and they, they played great. And so sometimes you just have to tip the cap, you know, and, and um, you control what you can control and do what you can do. And, and at the end of the day, you live with the results. And and so, you know, on one hand, you were a little salty, but on the other, you know, you're pretty proud of how they represented the league and, and uh, you look at it and like, you know, that can be us someday. And it gives you hope. It gives you excitement for the future. And um, I think we used it as motivation and um, we, you, you know, you have to be proud. Paul, Paul does a great job over there. He had great players and they were very, very connected, especially at the end of the year last year. And you could really, really see that the role players were playing at a high level. And then obviously what Max A. Smith and Kevin O'Banner did was just terrific. So, I mean, you just mentioned Max right there. And I know he's not one of your guys, but, I mean, you've had as good a look at him as anyone. I mean, is he an NBA player? Your, your thoughts on that? He has, certainly has qualities that he can be a part of it. There's no doubt about it. The way that the NBA values shooting, um, the, his ability to get downhill and his speed with the basketball um, is is just electric and dynamite, honestly. And he's such a hard guard for – anybody you know in the country I mean that was proven last year not just in our league but uh he, he's such a you know elite score and and he really really has great you know efficiency from even deep and so 
I, I believe he's going to get his opportunity. He's a great kid that, you know, carries himself with a tremendous amount of class. We have a ton of respect for him. And, and I just believe that good things happen to people like that. And I know he's going to get an, his opportunity. He's going to take full advantage of it. So how does that work? Do, do you ever get calls from, you know, NBA GMs and scouts going, about opposing players? Is, is that ever come across? I mean, obviously, they know we call like your guys. Yeah. Um, do you ever get questions from, uh, you know, about opposing players? Yeah. We do, you know, you use your connections and that, that you have and, and um, the, the, the guys that I know well are, you know, will call me and say, hey, what do you, who else in your league do you think is, you know, can kind of, you know, in the ballpark or whatever. And so we get those calls quite a bit. And, and um, you know, there's a handful of players in our league right now that are capable of that. So it's uh, kind of fun to, you know, watch, you know, even, even other players from our league be successful, you know, what, John Conchar is doing with the Memphis Grizzlies has been really fun to watch for us, to be honest with you. I was able to coach against him for four years and always had a ton of respect for his game. And now I know they're in the Horizon League now, but uh, he, 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 you know, he, he came from our league and he, he, he's just a terrific player and it's kind of fun to watch his success. A kid, Amude as well. Where is he? Uh, where did he go to Arkansas, Arkansas now? Yeah. 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 He, he's, he's he, nice he, was, he was an electric scorer. I'll tell you that much. And obviously he's doing it there too. So before I worked in the media, uh, I was a music agent and concert promoter. I produced concerts for Grammy winning musicians. Um, so I always want to check in with coaches on, you know, when they're working out, any particular music or podcast suggestions um, that, that's come, you know, anything you're into recently. Oh, man, I know this. We play music throughout the whole practice. And you know how many words I hear? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. I, I, I'd love to be able to help you, Chris, but that's way past my league, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, you know, what's funny, even though I'm in, you know, I'm in my mid force, I still keep, you know, I keep up to date. You know what I mean? Yeah, the that's cool. stuff, so um, I love uh, it. I love it, man. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you open Saturday against Omaha. You mentioned, I mean, a week off. What's the plan over the next couple of days just to keep the guys sharp? Well, you know, we'll, we'll uh, give them tomorrow off. We actually had light workouts today, just individual workouts with coaches, um, light shooting. And, um, and then we'll do the same on Wednesday, actually. So we'll do off Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we'll do this similar to what we did today, except for at the end, we'll do about a 30 minute situation type deal where just talk about some late game situations, some special out of bounds plays um, just, just to prepare I um, mean, you know, what, you know, we're going to be in some of those situations. That's just inevitable during the conference tournament. So we just want our guys to feel comfortable about those. If you can never fully prepare for them, but if you know that situation comes up, we want them to be comfortable with that. So we'll do that on Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday we'll prepare for Omaha, and and then take it from there. Like I said, we're a team that doesn't look too far ahead. We embrace the moment that's in front of us, and then uh, we'll take on the challenges after if we so happen to be. So Eric, I'm thankful for your time. Really appreciate it. Last question here. I mean, you guys outstanding season, you know, 27 and four, 18 and 0, historic season. If you don't get to March Madness, is this season a disappointment? I would never say this season's a disappointment. You can only can control what you can control. Do we want to make the NCAA tournament? Of course. But more importantly, we want to continue to get better. We want to stay connected. And if we're fortunate enough to win the win the league tournament, we'll be in March Madness and that's what's supposed to happen. So I, I don't look at it like that, Chris. Of course, we want, we want that. We, we, we want to work towards making that happen. But that's an outcome of the process. And we worry about the process way more than we do the outcome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. And I'm, I'm rooting for it. You know, like I said, I caught, <laughs> caught you guys a little bit earlier in the season. I'm like, man, this, this is fun. You know, just really enjoyed watching you guys. So, um, you know, you got, you got a fan up in Canada. So keep on keeping on. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Chris, I appreciate it, my man. You, you keep on keeping on and, and keep uh, promoting this special game. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Yeah, take care, pal. <laughs>